Hello all, we're here today near Gravesend. We're over in Kent and we're joined by another excellent explorer. We've got Dan from Phoenix History here. Please do go and check out his channel. He's got some excellent videos and he's got absolutely tons of places on there. <laughs> yeah, so um, he's been kind enough to show us around um, this anti-aircraft battery and we're also going to check out a few other local curiosities later. It's probably one of the worst days we've <laughs> ever explored on. Um, it's pouring down with rain, it's windy, um, we're actually filming this inside one of the few dry buildings, but um, soon enough we're going to have to brave the outdoors <laughs> and actually have a good look around. So here is the magazine or ammunition store for the battery. Still got paint on the walls, is that? Either way, the concrete looks really good condition. Got these sort of metal, big door frames. And you can see it's all sunken in to the ground to protect it from blast. And it's got this blast wall all the way around, which is basically like a crumple zone in case a bomb landed nearby. And the explosives inside that are obviously very volatile. Hopefully the idea is they wouldn't explode. Look at the look at the size of that um, shutter or whatever would have been on that. Yeah, huge. Really like these fucking, especially because there's barely any tech. I mean, the actual conditioner is... Yeah, enough. definitely. So this is the uh, magazine, the ammunition store for the battery. Um, and it's all surrounded by a massive blast wall. It's all sunken into the ground to protect it from blast in case obviously anti-aircraft batteries were high value targets so um, they had to be defended from air raids quite quite heavily As you can see, lovely, lovely weather we've got here, guys. Wind, rain, yeah, it's not the best, it's got to be said, but Cold as well. <laughs> it is actually really freezing. Um, but you know, we're doing it anyway. Original wood, bit of slate, is that? So this probably would have been a bomb shelter, I reckon. But look, yeah, you've got, as Joe's just pointed out, this bit of corrugated iron, it's all very rusty. Quite thick, um, but look at it. That's the only piece of it left, but presumably that would have covered this whole little room. So we've got another emplacement here. Yep. It's funny, you've got these little corrugated or they would have had a corrugated iron roof yeah. but they're like little i don't know if that's a bomb shelter or that might have been sometimes I mean, they had shelters yeah, sometimes for the crew they did right stuff. next to it yeah but really when you when you eventually see that you've got there's a chimney and everything else in the headquarters all so. oh, right cool yeah. yeah look at this got a tree here hanging by a thread 
and knowing what the wind's like today, I don't want to stand under it for too long. <laughs> Got some um, little finds. I don't know if these are original from the site, but they could be. This is the bow headquarters. Cool, yeah. Loads of bottles, look. Yeah. Easy. What is that? Is that um That's leather? Yeah look, that must be a leather is it? Wow. Oh my god. That is cool, isn't it? <laughs> what is that? Back. That looks <laughs> like a um a trap, isn't it? That is a trap. Yeah, wow, well, look at well. that. That is actually awesome, isn't it? It's is so a little time capsule, yeah. I'd like to come here again in time. Little archaeology it's session. Amazing. That is amazing. It's pretty incredible. I don't think we've ever been to a place that's got this many artifacts like this. I mean, we've got dozens of bottles that have still got um, the original like uh, writing on them. Uh, but so many bits of like crockery. There's like an old military number plate here. There's dozens of artifacts. It's fascinating. Top spot by Dan here. It looks like an original military number plate. Old oh, cannon plate, yeah, look. Amazing, look. Oh, something N57 or something by the looks of it. That is insane. And that's definitely of a really old style. But you know what I reckon that is? I don't, I don't know, but that's not an old... Um, Home, like an ankle gaiter, is it? I don't think so, but the home guard, they had leather ones rather than canvas ones, but I don't know what, I don't think that's that, but looks sort of like the same shape, doesn't it? And it's made out of leather. You never know. So it says there, Haywood's Military Pickle. Perhaps a jar for some kind of ration that they would have had. So we're going inside the command bunker where the directing of the guns and stuff would have all gone on. I suppose this is where they would have spotted enemy aircraft and, and given people the orders to fire upon them. That's the uh, original fireplace there as well. Yeah. There we go. Old fireplace. So they obviously would have had a bit of fire, a bit of warmth in here, um, whilst having to direct the gunfire. So this could have been used, you know, in the blitz. So here we've just found the actual area where an observation sighting equipment would have been mounted. Got this hole in the ground here, and they would have had basically like a sort of, I don't know if it was a sort of telescope, and you'd use that to spot the craft 
and probably they could determine things like the speed, the distance of the aircraft through that equipment. And that would be mounted in this pit and you've got this sort of curve to um, denote which way it probably would have sort of faced. So there's a hatch, do you think they would have like passed things out there? That would have technically, yeah. I mean, the escape hatch, I think, was over there from what I recall. Oh, which, right. Which obviously was sort of like, I think, where it sort of caved in a little bit. That's a light switch. Yeah, there you go. That's what they, you know, would have had to light the bunker most Maybe. Likely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's another area here. I'm not sure what all the areas of the posts were used for but they, yeah, I mean, they I varied don't, in I don't design know, yeah, I think can be from each one, so. yeah but all we know is I mean like so if you know from just the site of this place this is a permanent fixture it was meant to be to cause some serious damage but yeah the general's obviously going over I mean that's the thing like you know I don't know if you can hear the wind, but and the rain it is horrible. It's so it's horrible out here. <laughs> Pretty intense. Wrapped up, but still not enough. My waterproof's actually soaked. Didn't last very long. Um, and yeah, the, it's, just, it's rough. It's a rough one. This. So this is part of the barracks for the anti-aircraft battery. still left cool though you can tell if you go in there I mean I, I poke my head in <laughs> <laughs> Could be, it does look pretty old, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. Impressive place. <laughs> so uh, we are standing in, uh, this is Lord Darnley's um, sort of mausoleum, which is quite famous around here. It's uh, quite iconic for people who know about it. Uh, the story basically in a nutshell is that the Darnleys were related to the Stuart clan or had descendants in the Stuart clan, which gave you entitlement that you could be buried within the Westminster ground. What happened was that they were starting to get filled up. So Lord Darnley, whichever one it was, which I can't remember, one of the Darnleys, decided that he was going to go, right, I'm just going to build my own crypt, my own tomb, and we're going to start burying people in there. Unfortunately, nobody is actually buried in there. So it's almost like an empty shell of itself. And the acoustics in there, there's a lot of iconic imagery and stuff like that, and definitely an amazing bit of history should you come out. So yeah. There we go. What an amazing place. Such an unusual design as well. Looks good even still in this weather, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Adds to the like, atmosphere. So this is the Warden's house for yeah. the park at, or Cobb and Woods yeah, yeah really yeah and yeah so this is the site of his house like a little cottage the site of the sort of yeah. house's floor That's right. and then yeah the cellar or yeah. some kind of underground area going down there so we're here at a monument it's sort of you know looking a bit worse for wear unfortunately it was vandalized several decades ago but this is Lord Dar Darnley's toe and it actually has a very, very interesting story behind it. Very unusual story. If you do want to find out the past behind this monument, 
go and check out Dan's channel, Phoenix History, and check out the video, which we're going to link in, which will tell you all about the very unusual and quite a tragic story behind this place. We've got these cows in the, on the track, and some of them have got actual horns. <laughs> so we've got to be careful here, guys. Can we go in the middle or round? Trying, I think they've actually kind of pinched a bit a little bit because the two footpaths are yeah, they're all both over sides the place, are aren't they? Horns, I'm not being funny, like, yeah, oh, and now oh. we've decided enough deliberating. <laughs> we need to get out of here. Bloody hell, they're all in there as well. Oh, Christ, look there, mate. Oh, shit. look down there. Look. Yeah, I know. Right, we're going to be on our merry way. Crazy, yeah. We found this storm tree on the way back. Just a little interesting thing. Very windy again. But yeah, this tree was actually hollowed out by lightning. What has happened, Dan just said, um, lightning struck it. It set fire to the amber and the sap inside the tree. And oh, that's like burned and burned away. And then it exploded out and basically it's hollowed the entire tree out and it's all charcoal in here. Not every day you get to see this. From what I remember, it's like, it's like because the amp is like liquid, it sort of like goes in and it spontaneously combusts. So it just yeah, goes yeah. Boom, like that. Yeah. Not every day you get to stand inside a tree. Right, so we're going up to another little place here. We're going up to Ashenbank Woods. Well, that's where we are now. And we're going to check out two air raid shelters. They look like they're Stanton shelters. Um, still here in the woods. They're all locked off because they're part of the nature reserve here. But we can have a good look in. Um, and these were part of RAF Gravesend, um, the airfield which actually used to cover this whole area. So the final place we're going to be looking at, you can see in front of us, we've got this mound in amongst the woods. It's in a big clearing, as you can see. Doesn't look like much, but believe it or not, it's actually a Bronze Age um, barrow where um, a wealthy individual would have been buried in the Bronze Age. And to think that it's still here all these years later, you can still see exactly the site of it. And if we go up, you can see the height of it a bit better, it never comes out that well on camera, but you can see that there is quite a clearly defined mound here. Right. So then thanks for watching guys, this is the end of the video now. Um, cheers to Dan for showing us some real hidden gems. Um, we've seen a nice variety of places today of all different varieties and styles and eras and yeah it's been a good day out the rain's actually stopped which is good it's still a little bit cold don't think we've dried off just yet but we did survive and we got the places done that we wanted to do so yeah please do go and check out phoenix history and also if you want to see more stuff from beyond the point please do like and subscribe to us and we'll see you on the next adventure see ya see ya